Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of the LR Time Labs Expert Tips. And thank you so much for your feedback so far. This new tip is not really an expert tip because experts would normally not work with JPEG sequences. That's also why I had to go back a little bit in time to find a JPEG sequence on my hard drive. But finally, I managed to find one that I recorded years ago with a GoPro on the seashells, very nice islands by the way. And that sequence is JPEG. And uh, let's have a look at it. As you can see, there's a lot of flicker. The exposure times are too short. The interval is too long and so on. So it's not really a nice sequence, but for demonstration purposes here, it will do. And I know that a lot of LR time-lapse users still use JPEG sequences just because they have them, just because they shot them with an action cam, for example, or another camera that's not able to shoot in RAW. You might know that the visual preview normally doesn't allow you to work with JPEG sequences. This is what happens if you activate the visual previews on a JPEG sequence, then you get a notification. The technical background here is that the Adobe DNG converter doesn't allow us to work with JPEG sequences, while Lightroom allows us to convert a JPEG sequence into a DNG sequence. So we are going to use that as a workaround in order to bring the JPEG sequences here into the visual preview. Okay, the first step would be to do metadata initialize to reset everything so that we have a neutral start for our DNG conversion. Now we can do the keyframes wizard and save everything. In this case, I will just stay with one keyframe and now drag the sequence to Lightroom and import it as usual. Now that we have the sequence imported into Lightroom, we go to library, convert photos to DNG. Make sure to remove the check mark here for only convert raw files because we are going to convert to JPEG sequence. And what I also activate is delete originals after successful conversion. This will just uh, remove the JPEGs after the conversion. The rest you can leave as it is. And now we click on OK. Of course, Lightroom is not going to make raw files out of those JPEGs. The only thing that it will do is wrap the JPEGs with a DNG container. And as soon as we have those JPEGs embedded in the DNG containers, we can use them with the visual workflow in LR time lapse. Now we have a DNG sequence in Lightroom. You can see the DNG ending here in the toolbar. We set a filter to our keyframes and now we can edit this keyframe. Just set a crop to 16 to 9 and do a very rough edit just by clicking on auto here. Go back to the grid view, save my metadata via Control S on Windows, Command S on Mac. Back in LR Timelapse, we still see the list of JPEGs displayed here. LR Timelapse cannot know that we converted them into DNG. That's why we just switch the folder quickly and then go back to this folder in order to reload them. And now you see they have the extension DNG now and we can now do the same that we would do after reloading here. We could just do an auto transition and now we can activate the visual previews and this time it works. Playing back this sequence, you can see it still looks weird. There's a lot of flicker, but the great thing now that we have a DNG sequence, we can use the visual previews and also the visual deflicker. So let's do that quickly. Um, first, I'll set a reference area here to just isolate the flicker and remove this outer parts a little bit from the reference for the deflicker. And now just apply a multipass deflicker with three passes. And this will most likely get rid of all of this flicker. So deflicker has ended. Let's have a look can already see the pink curve is really, really smooth. So that worked out like a charm and the flicker is nearly gone. 
considering that this is still a JPEG sequence, although the JPEGs are now embedded in DNG containers, the result is pretty nice now. But still, the disadvantages of JPEGs, a small dynamic range, pre-edited, and uh, of course, you don't really have a white balance adjustment that you can do. On JPEGs, it's only fake white balance, just shifting the colors a little bit. If you work with raw files, you have real white balance freedom. I would like to repeat my recommendation that if you really want to do time lapse, please work with raw files. But if you have old JPEG sequences still lying on your hard drives, then this tip should be very handy because it allows you to use the full alert time lapse power also on your JPEG sequences. I hope this again was helpful for you. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't yet. Give me a thumbs up for the video and then we see each other next time for a new episode of the alert time lapse expert tips. Bye bye.